So if you Google the word hybrid, there's a good chance you're gonna find a picture of this guy, the Toyota Prius, with a face that only a mother could love. Uh, however, some of you may remember that Honda was technically the first to market or mass produce a hybrid vehicle in America about eight months before the Prius back in 1999. Now, just because you're first does not mean you're the most successful. And throughout the years, Toyota really stole away that hybrid thunder from Honda with the best-selling Prius, which has become a huge family of cars here in America throughout the years. So today, Honda is looking to learn from their mistakes, and they've flown me and a bunch of other journalists out to Minneapolis, Minnesota, where we're testing the all-new Insight, and they've also provided an all-new Prius uh, to compare for us. So if you guys are looking for a new commuter car with uh, the need to get over 50 MPG, which of these two is the better buy? That's where you're going to find out. So even among hybrid buyers, styling is a very important category. And this is kind of where the Prius has been very polarizing, especially since this all new fourth generation came out two years ago, back in 2016. I said earlier, this is kind of a face that really only a mother could love. And I have to say, even after two years, it still hasn't completely grown on me. The car kind of looks narrow and a little tall, which isn't necessarily a great thing, although this is riding on the Toyota TNGA platform, the same one that underpins the Camry. It's actually a really sporty to drive vehicle, which is rare that you can find with a Prius. But looking at the front end styling, you can see it's definitely very strange. Um, luckily, all Prius models will come standard with LED headlights. They're only an LED low and high beam. The turn signal is just an incandescent. You do have LED fog lights on this particular one because it's the high trim. Uh, the parking sensors here, I don't really think they're that well integrated because it kind of just looks like it has freckles or maybe even I want to stick like whiskers that come out from here because it's just in a really strange position. The sensor for the Toyota Safety Sense P is behind the emblem. Of course, it has a blue Toyota emblem uh, to show that this is the hybrid or a hybrid since Toyota does that. But overall, I think the design, I still can't get on board with it. I just think that I think, or I think this is the reason why Prius sales have really tanked because people just don't love the styling. You either love it or you hate it. In contrast, let's move over to the new Insight because Honda designed this car to be a premium hybrid. They wanted it to be a very attractive sedan that just so happened to be a hybrid. You can see it has all the traditional styling cues that we've seen on all the latest Honda products. You have the split winged chrome grille, standard full LED headlights where the turn signal is LED, the high beams LED, and it has an LED running light. And then you have LED fog lights below on this particular one because it's a touring trim. And overall, the inside has a low, wide, kind of sleeker, more upscale uh, looking body versus the Prius. And I think that's what's really gonna resonate well with buyers. Um, you don't have to drive something that looks super weird to save gas because both of these vehicles get over uh, 50 MPG. So when you look at the side design of the Prius, things don't get any more conventional either. I mean, for Toyota to give us a hybrid vehicle that's efficient, you need to have a very slippery silhouette. It has to slip through the wind, and the Prius definitely does so with like a 0.24 coefficient of drag. It's one of the best in the segment. And you can see here, looking at the side prof profile, this one is a Prius 4 Touring, so you do get these uh, wheels. These are kind of the upgraded wheels on the Prius. They're a 17-inch design. Other trims will kind of have a 15-inch design. These definitely look better. They're in 215-45 tires, uh, Bridgestone and Copia. It does have like a plastic cover over the wheel, which Toyota has always done for aerodynamics. I think the wheels, they look fine, although when you start kicking it, you hear that plastic. I don't really like that. But in terms of the size, the Prius rides on a 103.6 inch wheelbase. It's about 178 inches long, um, which actually, when you look at it from the side, it doesn't look very long. This is probably a very strange angle of the Prius right here um, with this floating roof design and the, the tail lights. But in contrast, let's go over to the inside and see how it looks from the side profile. So in contrast to the Prius, the inside again has a more traditional looking shape uh, and this is also a sedan remember that the roof line also has that kind of coupe like look it takes a lot of styling cues from the current Civic and the Accord uh, this one being the touring trim comes with 17 inch alloy wheels which are an inch bigger versus the base LX and EX they're also on 215 tires um, from the side again Honda also gives you a little subtle hybrid badge here and the wheels don't have that stupid plastic covering like the Prius so um, you know, you don't have to deal with that. Although I don't really like the directional look of the Insights wheels. They very much mimic what you get on the uh, concept that they showed in Detroit. Now, in terms of the size, the Insight also rides on a 106.3 inch wheelbase. And this is the longer car versus the Prius. Overall length is about 183 inches long, uh, making this about five inches longer than the Prius over there and about an inch longer than the Honda Civic. So overall, the Insight side profile definitely has more of that sleeker, more, you know, upscale sedan look versus the Prius. So although styling is always subjective. When you look at the rear end of these two cars, they couldn't be more different. And it's very easy to say the inside is less 
offensive. The rear of the Prius is just so distinctive looking. Um, I still cannot get used to it. It's a very strange looking car. Now let's start with the Prius in terms of its design. This is still a liftback. Toyota still calls this the Prius liftback. You have a little small window here that with this like intersecting portion here that cuts into your rear view. Um, and the taillights, they took a lot of styling cues from the Mirai, their fuel cell car. It's an LED taillight, although the turn signals um, are in incandescent, so it's kind of like a culmination LED. I don't really like the black plastic cladding they use here, but you do have uh, pretty well integrated parking sensors back there. And then of course a backup camera is included. Now the Prius being a liftback does give you a good amount of cargo space. You're looking at around 25 cubic feet of space with all the seats up. And then you, of course you have a nice little sunshade here to cover up. Um, but the, the cargo area of the Prius to me, I think is the you know better choice because this is a liftback design. So in contrast to the Prius, let's take a look at the rear end of the inside because this is probably the best looking rear end design of any Honda sedan in the lineup. A lot of you really had an issue with the Accord and this is probably what what the Accord should have looked like uh, to start. But you can see here, it also has LED combination rear taillights. The brake light is an LED, and then the actual taillight is an LED. The turn signal is an incandescent along with the reverse light. It's kind of a afterthought. I don't know if I like this area here. I kind of think Honda could have just done without it and just given us an LED turn signal, but I'm kind of nitpicking there. I like the rear bumper design with the chrome here. Of course, both cars aren't showing any exhaust tips because these are hybrids. Um, this is where you kind of go to the cargo area and you realize this, the inside is a traditional sedan. Some of you you may really prefer that. Although you do lose space compared to the Prius, Honda rates this at 15.1 cubic feet of space, which is actually the same as what you get in the Civic, about one cubic, feet, cubic foot less than what you get in the Accord hybrid. And then underneath the floor here, uh, Honda does not give you a temporary spare. Instead, you have to deal with a fix a flat kit, which is kind of what I expected. But in this higher trim, the seats do fold down 60 40, uh, just like they do in the Prius. So getting into the interior of the Prius first, these two cars couldn't be more different again on the inside. The Prius takes its weird styling on the exterior and kind of brings it inside. Now this is the top of the line model. It's the uh, four touring trim, which actually means the interior actually is pretty nice. Now all Priuses will come with the company smart key access system with push button start. Um, to start the vehicle up, you just put your foot on the brake push the button here. The Prius puts all of its instrumentation gauges up on the high part of the dash here, and then it'll say ready up there to show that it's actually started. And then it gives you this little chime, which I believe you can turn on and off. This eyebrow display here definitely takes some getting used to. Um, it makes this very strange because a lot of people are used to, you know, information here, uh, but Toyota kind of puts it all over there. It makes it feel very different. Now the rest of the interior, this car feels pretty roomy. I like the fact that the seats are a 10 way power adjusting with an actual adjustable lumbar support. Um, the seats also feel pretty comfortable. This is the soft tex leatherette. It's not real leather, but uh, the steering wheel also kind of feels like it has that same leatherette material, which actually feels a little bit cheap to me on the steering wheel when I touch it. Now the rest of the materials here, you can see it's soft touch on this part of the dash, but hard touch over here. Um, there's more interesting, you know, shapes right here. And then on the door panels, it's also soft touch with one touch up and down for all four. So that's definitely a nice thing. Now this head unit here, this is the same head unit that I showed you in the Prius Prime. This is the 11.6 inch Toyota Entune display. Now, unfortunately, this is not the newest version of Entune that includes Apple CarPlay or Android. Amazon Alexa, no Android Auto sell on any Toyota product. Uh, instead, this is kind of like the older system with this gigantic screen, which I think looks impressive. It's very Tesla-like. You have you know, your navigation function here where you put this gigantic screen right here. If you need to go to your climate, just tap climate here, it'll kind of bring it up and then you can kind of make that go away. There's also a menu and a home button here. You can see the menu brings you all your different apps, your phone display. I mean, this is very impressive to look at. When you put the vehicle into reverse, it also gives you a backup camera. This car also has automatic parallel parking function where it'll park itself for you. That's something that the Insight doesn't offer. I'm surprised this car doesn't have a 360 camera though, especially at this price point. Uh, but again, down here, more weirdness with the shifter. Toyota, the Prius has always kind of had this strange joystick shifter where if you want to go to neutral, you go here and then hold it. Reverse is up and then drive is down and then push P over here to go into park. You have your drive mode selector here. Now, one thing that the Toyota Prius does give you is a wireless charging pad on this higher trim. That's a feature that's not available on the Insight. And then you have lots of storage here for your cup holders and then a nice little center console right here, which gives you a good amount of storage. Um, and then USB ports you'll find down here. The heated seat buttons are kind of buried all the way down here. So there is some kind of ergonomic things that I'm noticing here with this car. And then of course, no volume knob. Instead, you just have this little button here, which kind of, which may annoy you if you guys prefer something like that. But overall, the interior of the Prius, I like this color combination with the two-tone, uh, but if you want things like, you know, a sunroof, uh, it's not available on this car, um, but it still feels really roomy, but 
it can feel a little bit narrow. So let's get into the uh, front seat on the inside and see how that compares. So getting into the interior of the new Insight, it's a really traditional feeling space. And you know, some of you who prefer that are really going to want this car. And you know, Honda did a really good job with this interior. If you remember the old Insight, that interior felt very cramped. It had a lot of cheap materials. It just kind of felt like a cheap car. That's not really the case. Now, most Insight models will come with the company's smart key access system with push button start. It has remote start in the actual fob. So to start it up, put your foot on the brake, it starts up. It says ready in the instrument panel. And those gauges, they're taken right out of the current generation Accord. There's a seven inch display here, and then a regular analog speedometer on the right. It looks very attractive. The steering wheel also was taken from the Accord. And when I touch the steering wheel, I'm immediately noticing the leather feels very high quality unlike the, the cheapness that I felt with the Prius. So this automatically feels like a more premium cabin. Although there are certain elements about this car's interior that doesn't feel as nice as the Prius. It doesn't feel as open and as airy as the Prius because the dashboard is a little bit higher. You have this very wide center console here, which is taking up space. So it makes the car feel a little bit more confined, but definitely not cramped. Now, um, the driver's seat is an eight-way power on this particular trim. It doesn't have adjustable lumbar, so that kind of annoys me. I'm okay with it, but some of you who want an adjustable lumbar, you may find that a deal breaker and Toyota gives that to you in the Prius. But the rest of this interior, the materials, you have a soft touch dash material here on the upper portion. There's an actual stitched portion right here that goes down to the shifter, uh, which looks pretty impressive. It's actually a really nice detail. The door panels are also soft touch. Um, with leather padding over here. The windows are only one touch up and down on the front. So Toyota gives it to you for all four. So that's kind of, again, a little bit of a detail that I'm noticing there. Now, going to the center stack here, this is the latest Honda Link display. It's an eight inch touchscreen display. It's the same one that we've seen in the Honda Accord with a volume knob, of course. No tuning knob though. Instead, Honda gives you a little button here for that. You do have Android Auto and you do have Apple CarPlay. So of course that's already one up on the Prius. Although this screen is not as impressive looking because it's a much smaller screen. It kind of has the features. The functionality, I mean, I like the way this works. It's very straightforward. Same thing with the Toyota. Although I find that most people, most people are probably gonna be more impressed with this system. Now, when you put the vehicle into reverse, a Honda also gives you a backup camera and the resolution is pretty much similar to the, what the Prius gives you. No 360 camera on either trim, which kind of surprised me, but uh, at the Insight's price point, this is kind of a little bit more excusable. Now down here, there is no wireless phone charging pad, but this area here is big enough to hold an iPhone 8. Uh, plus, uh, but unfortunately no wireless charging. You do have two USB ports here. You have your transmission selector over here, which is basically taken out of you know the Acura product or the 10 speed auto. Again, this is not a CVT, just a single speed uh, reduction gear transmission, which is definitely unique to the Insight. Over here, it's very civic like with this center console that opens up. You have storage and then cup holders down here. So. In terms of the storage space, they're both good. Um, I definitely find that the Prius's interior feels a little bit more airy, but I like the fact that the inside has a moonroof and it makes this interior feel a little bit more upscale. Now these are gonna be used as family vehicles. So the back seat is pretty important. And this is where Toyota actually quotes the rear legroom here at 35 cubic inches, which is a pretty good amount of space. Now getting back here, I'm five foot seven. I'm seeing that there's a very good amount of legroom here. Good, great foot space here. You have two map pockets. So I could sit back here and comfortably, you know, cross my legs. Now, in terms of the headroom, because there's no sunroof, there's a good amount of headroom, um, but the materials, you can see they are hard touch plastic right here on the back, so they didn't cut, they didn't carry that through. You do have a nice little folding armrest here uh, to make this a little bit more comfortable, but I'm surprised the floor here is not completely flat, but this is, this is where they put the actual lithium ion batteries underneath the rear seat, so that kind of takes into the space. You definitely feel like you're sitting up higher, but in comparison, um, Honda actually quotes the rear legroom on the inside to be about two inches more, so let's get into the back of that and see how it compares. So getting into the back seat of the Insight, I am noticing one thing, this roof slopes down a lot more, so I have to duck my head. The Prius gives you a little bit more headroom getting in, but once you're back here, you can see the space feels pretty comparable. I don't really know if I feel the extra two inches of legroom here, but you know, there's good foot space underneath here. I can pretty much, you know, stretch my legs out nicely. I can cross my legs as well. So it is pretty good. The headroom, it is taken up a little bit by the sunroof, but I'm very short, so I'm okay back here. Now, in terms of the materials, it's hard touch plastic again, just like the Prius, so they didn't carry over that. And then you only get one uh, map pocket on the passenger seat, but at least you still get a nice folding armrest here with two cup holders and the seats still fold 60-40. Um, just like the Prius, there's a hump here, although the hump in the Insight is a little bit higher. Honda again mounts the battery pack underneath the 
rear seats to save space, which is why the seats are still able to fold. So underneath the hood of the current Prius, you find a pretty familiar powertrain. Toyota again made big changes to this car back in 2016. It's a 1.8 liter gasoline four-cylinder engine that runs on the Atkinson cycle, paired with an electric motor system and a CVT uh, driving the power to the front wheels. Now, a lot of, there's a lot of numbers and stuff with hybrids. All you need to know is it makes a combined 121 horsepower, um, which is pretty much what you'd expect from a hybrid, although it is starting to be down on power compared to competition. The Prius does excel in the fuel economy game, though. You do get, in this particular trim, 54 in the city and 50 on the highway, which is really excellent numbers. This car weighs a uh, tick over 3,100 pounds, and of course, as I said before, it is front-wheel drive. Now, in contrast, let's go over to the Insights powertrain because this is Honda's uh, third-generation uh, two-motor hybrid system, of course, that they first showed us on the Accord. And in the Insight, what's, what's different about this and the Accord is it has a 1.5 liter uh, gasoline four-cylinder engine with their IV tech technology, it runs on the Atkinson cycle. Uh, the gas engine on its own, Honda quoted it made like, like around 106 horsepower. Uh, combined with the electric motor system, it makes 151 horsepower. So that's a 30 horsepower increase or you know, boost over the Prius. And it also makes 197 pound-feet of torque. Toyota, I don't believe, quotes a torque number on the Prius. Um, now, fuel economy, the Insight used to lag behind the Prius, especially if you compared it to the old one. Uh, this is now rated at 51 in the city and 45 on the highway. So that is less than what you get in the Prius. However, keep in mind, this is the touring model. It does get a little bit lower gas miles versus the LX and EX because of the tires. Insights are still only front-wheel drive. One of the big differences between this and the Prius, this only has a single-speed uh, drive transmission. So it's not a CVT, it's just a, a single speed drive, like an electric car, kind of like what you find in the Chevrolet Volt. Um, but it makes the Insight's driving experience pretty different, but we'll get out on the road and we'll see which of these two cars actually drives better. So this is probably pretty pointless, but it's not every day where you have an all new Insight and an all new Prius together. So Honda says the Insight is one and a half seconds quicker zero to 60 wise versus the Prius. So I've got this new fourth generation Prius here. We're gonna do a quick little drag race with the Insight. All right, you ready? You ready? You go one, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. Wow. The Insight just smoked this car. I had it in power mode also, wow. That's, uh, <laughs> that's interesting, okay. <laughs> Wow, this car is so much slower than the Insight. <laughs> wow, I'm shocked. Okay. So, setting off in the all new fourth generation Prius. I actually haven't had a chance to actually review this car for you guys. Um, I drove the Prius Prime a couple years ago. I was pretty impressed with it. Now, settling into this Prius 4, I really love the big 11 inch display. It makes this car feel pretty tech savvy. Uh, and just going down the road, the Prius definitely feels you know, very nice to drive. It has a very solid feel to it. Um, the ride quality also is pretty good because they've moved to an independent rear suspension in this car. And you know, I can't really complain too much. It's a pretty pleasant driving car. The steering also is electric, but it has pretty good feedback. It's also quick to respond. This is not the, you know, horrible driving Prius of the first generation or even, you know, the, you know, the later models. Toyota's really elevated the handling aspect because it's now riding on that TNGA architecture. But you can see here, like the steering feel is good. The car changes directions. And it, you know what, this road is pretty crappy that I'm on, but it handles the bumps very well. <laughs> um, but I mean, overall, you know, the visibility in Haro is also pretty good. The hood is really low. Uh, you have these big mirrors. The window out of the back though, you know, you have to get used to that kind of split view. But uh, once you do that, you know, it's kind of a nice driving car. The one thing I like about the Prius a lot are the seats. These are just more comfortable, I find. Um, and they're just, you know, I like the fact that it has a lumbar adjustment because I thought the Insight's seats uh, had just too much of an aggressive lumbar. Come on, this car definitely feels sluggish. Toyota quotes the zero to 60 time at 10 seconds. Uh, and it's interesting because the Insight has a smaller gasoline engine, but it definitely has a stronger electric motor, I don't know, or the transmission, that one speed is just a better pick because the Prius definitely feels sluggish in terms of the acceleration. Now, in terms of the noise, I do find that the engine is more quiet in this car versus the Insight. It screams a lot in the Insight, which is a little bit annoying, but it's in its power mode right now, floored. 
I mean, this is a hybrid. You're not going to be driving it like this because, you know, it's not designed to be, you know, in drag races. But when you're just kind of cruising along normally, it's very smooth riding. It's pretty quiet. It will putter along in electric only mode. And you'll definitely be getting that excellent MPG, which is what you expect in this type of car. So the Prius definitely has been, you know, raised in terms of its driving dynamics. Toyota did that with this new platform. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm really, you know, impressed with the way this car drives. Is it the best driving hybrid in the segment? No, uh, but it's definitely a Prius that you can actually enjoy attacking some back roads on because it actually handles decently well. It just needs a little bit work of work in terms of the acceleration aspect. So first setting off in the all new Insight, having just driven the Prius, I have to say this car has such a traditional feel. It feels like I'm driving a Civic hybrid sedan, which is essentially what the Insight is. But um, you can see, you know, the driving position is pretty good. I like the fact that the seat is height adjustable, although the lack of lumbar, I think this one has a little too much lumbar. The visibility in here is also really good. Um, I am noticing the dash is higher, um, so the hood is a little bit higher. You just feel like you're driving a bigger car. This car feels like a more, or a wider car. It feels like a more substantial car, which is the Prius can kind of feel a little bit more small, a little bit more playful. This also feels sporty, but it also feels a little bit more mature, a little bit more upscale versus the Prius. Now, this car's ride quality is also very good um, compared to the second generation model, which I haven't driven in a while. It's, got, it's now got a fully independent suspension, so it just has a solidity over as it goes over the road. The steering is also relatively quick. It's electric power steering assist. If you play with the modes here, you're going to sport mode, the steering doesn't really feel any different. It really just affects the throttle positioning or the throttle uh, the throttle and the uh, actual noise that comes in. Honda actually has some kind of an engine sound enhancer here where it kind of sounds a little bit like, I don't know, like some kind of George Jetson car from the future when you put your foot down, which I'll show you in a minute. But just driving the Insight for setting off, it feels like you're driving a normal car. So that's gonna be definitely something that people really prefer versus the Prius, which feels like a electric car or a hybrid. Bear with me while I look up directions here because I'm on a drive loop and I'm on an area where I'm not familiar with. Prepare to turn left, turn left to the stop sign onto 7th Street, stoplight. Now compared to the previous generation Insight, this is not the IMA integrated motor assist, which was a mild hybrid system. This is Honda's third generation um, two motor hybrid system, which has the ability to drive this car on electric power alone, and it doesn't even have a CVT transmission. It functions and feels actually like an electric car a lot of the times, and then when the gas engine does kick on, it really only kicks on to add or recharge the batteries to you know put more power into the actual electric motor so you can actually get more acceleration. The only time I actually noticed that it was driving the front wheels um, and it felt like a CVT was out on the highway. And there is that amplification noise that I'm hearing from, you know, I don't know what is the speakers. It sounds like, like an appliance. It's very strange. Very, very strange. So let's try a quick acceleration run. I'm going to put it into its sport setting here and we're going to put our foot down. I'm going to turn off the traction control. See if I can get this thing to spin the tires out. So not enough power to actually spin the tires, which didn't surprise me. This is a hybrid. <laughs> so we're gonna turn the traction control back on, but you can see here just kind of cruising down the road. The Insight has a very comfortable ride. It's also pretty quiet in here, although that strange engine noise, which is amplified in sport, is kind of annoying. I'm gonna turn it off actually and just go into its regular mode and it's a lot quieter. So in sport mode, just know that it makes that strange electric motor whirring noise. Um, but when you have it in its regular mode here, it's a little quieter. The engine definitely isn't quite as quiet as the Prius's engine. It's not like deafeningly loud. It's only doing that when you put it into sport mode here. <laughs> it has that really strange noise. Very, very strange. Ugh. But you can see here, Going down the road, the Insight feels like a very, you know, good car. Like it's it's a it's a great car driving car that just happens to be a hybrid. I think Honda very much nailed that kind of, um, you know, driving style and feel. Um, 
as with other Hondas, the Honda Sensing comes standard. Same thing with the Prius, which has Toyota Safety Sense P. This is a little bit better of a system, whereas the Lane Keep Assist actually will keep you, you know, centered in the lane. Toyota has a newer Toyota Safety Sense 2.0, which isn't on the Prius liftback just yet, that I tested on the Corolla hatch and the Lexus ES, which kind of matches what Honda Sensing does. The one thing this car is missing that the Toyota has is blind spot monitoring with a cross traffic alert. Instead, Honda gives you the Honda Sensing when you, you know, touch this button here or you signal right, it gives you that camera. I, I, I don't like it. Uh, it's kind of just a gimmicky feature that, you know, dealers could easily use. But in terms of, you know, actually using out in the real world, I think the blind spot monitoring with the rear cross driver alert is just a much more handy feature. But overall, in terms of driving dynamics, this definitely feels sporty, but so does the Prius. This is quicker accelerating. It feels more, more stiff and wide, and it definitely feels a little bit sportier, but I definitely prefer the actual overall feel of the Insight versus the Prius. So in the past, if you were looking for a fuel efficient sedan, the Prius was always the easy pick, especially when you compared it to the second generation Insight where this one was just more comfortable, more spacious, it got better MPG. It was just the overall more advanced car. Now with the all new third generation Insight, it's definitely made that choice a lot harder. These two cars, as you guys saw, drive very similarly in terms of the handling. This new Prius, now it's on that TNGA platform, handles and rides extremely well. They both have four wheel independent suspension. So the Insight is no longer the sportier option option when you start attacking the corners. Now in terms of the acceleration, the Insight is definitely the quicker option. Uh, Honda says this is about one and a half seconds quicker, zero to 60 versus this, and you instantly feel it when you put your foot down. Although I did notice that the Insight, the noise, the engine's a little bit buzzier and louder versus the Prius. So some of you may prefer the smoothness of this car um, and that may, not be, that end may end up being the deciding factor considering hybrids aren't really you know, bought for drag racing. So that brings me to which one I would choose personally. It's gonna have to come down to design and price for me. I think the Insight looks better. I just can't get past the strange looks of this car where I know it's a hybrid, you kinda have to make excuses for its slippery design, but it just looks too weird versus the Insight that has a more premium upscale traditional look and the pricing. The Prius starts at around $23,500 for a base Prius 1. That doesn't get you cruise control though, uh, whereas the Insight starts at around $22,800. That does get you cruise control and a lot of other features, although no Android Auto and CarPlay on the base trim of the Insight. Now these two are the top of the line, Prius 4 Touring, Insight Touring. This one is around $33,000 fully loaded, uh, whereas the Insight is around $29,000. So that does make this car a more attractive choice. Does it make it necessarily the better choice? On paper, it certainly does. Um, you really can't go wrong with either car, but today I'm definitely gonna pick the 2019 Honda Insight, the winner of this comparison test. But I hope you guys have enjoyed my uh, review on the new Prius and the all new Honda Insight. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.